Football is back and this Raven season, there are huge prizes to be won at Safeway. Enter Safeway's Flock In and Win sweepstakes and you could win up to $10,000 cash or autographed Ravens merchandise. All you have to do is shop the participating items throughout the store and enter your codes from your receipt at SafewayFlockInAndWin.com. Safeway makes sure Ravens fans have all of their game day needs to tailgate or host like a pro. Stop in and discover why football is better at Safeway, the official supermarket of the Baltimore Ravens. Local news, national news, even feel-good news. Delivering the topics that are relevant to you. That's why I listen to Joe. He covers it all. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. I'm so glad you're joining us. We do have a lot of widespread showers and thunder showers, thunderstorms right now. Uh, we don't have any that are that are severe. We've got one that's pretty close to severe. It's just south of Kissimmee, right around Harmony. Uh, we're keeping a close eye on that. Lots of lightning. If you hear that lightning, go indoors. Uh, what's the old uh, the old adage? Uh, lightning roars, you go indoors. Uh, just be careful. Florida is the lightning strike capital of the United States, and uh, we don't want anybody getting struck by lightning this afternoon uh, or any afternoon for that matter. So we're keeping a close eye on the weather. That, of course, will affect our traffic. Uh, and then Paul Cross will keep us updated on traffic throughout the course of the afternoon as well. Uh, I do want to give you a trigger warning as far as content is concerned. We are going to be uh, speaking here in this first couple of segments uh, about uh, child pornography of sorts, of sorts. Uh, I think it's debatable, and that's why I want to bring this up. Uh, the attorneys general from all 50 states and four territories have sent a letter to Congress urging lawmakers to to establish an expert commission to study how generative AI may potentially be used to exploit children through the creation of child sexual abuse material. The concern is AI-generated child sex imagery. As it stands right now, there are apps, there are websites, there are web programs where you can type or even say, I'll give you an example of one that I did not terribly long ago. Uh, I, I, I had an AI imagery created of Joe Biden and Donald Trump fighting in a boxing ring. And sure enough, it created pretty photorealistic images of Joe Biden and Donald Trump, both of whom were shirtless, right, because they're in a boxing ring, and, and they were boxing each other, and it, it generated five or six different images uh, of them for a fight. Pretty impressive stuff. Now, mind you, neither Donald Trump nor Joe Biden actually got into a boxing ring. Neither of them took their shirts off. Neither of them posed for these images. Neither of them were imposed upon to create the images. So if someone is creating AI-generated child sex imagery, what law is being broken? Who has their rights violated? Who is the victim? Now, I am certainly not arguing in favor of child sex imagery created by AI. I just can't figure out what exactly can be done about this. And what the, you know, it's interesting to see 50 states and four territories all have their attorneys general on the same page. That in and of itself is extremely rare to have everybody all in agreement that something needs to be done about AI-generated explicit material that involves children. But if they're not actually children, where is the crime? And even possession of child pornography, is it is it child pornography if children weren't actually used in the images. As I'm reading the story in uh, in ARS Technica, they write, in particular, open source image synthesis technologies such as stable diffusion allow the creation of AI-generated pornography with ease. 
and a large community has already formed around the tools and add-ons that enhance this ability. In fact, you've got to be careful because if you're going on, if you go on Instagram, TikTok, the person that you may be ogling may not be a real person. Those, those accounts already exist. There are already AI-generated Instagram and TikTok pages of scantily clad, trashy women that aren't actually humans. It is 100% computer-generated, real-looking, but not real people. And certainly having AI-generated images of children floating around in our community is not going to be good for humanity. I mean, there's no two ways about it. It's not good. It's not good for humanity. And for people who have a sickness, for people who are 'er ne'er-do-wells, for people who are scallywags and any other negative term that I could possibly render that would want to possess those images, shame on them. But, but, But what is the crime? How do you prosecute that? And how is that different then? Let's say that you are a brilliant artist. You're a painter. You're a drawer. How is that different than you drawing an image of two seven-year-old children in a sexual scenario? How is that different? If you're drawing an image of children in a, in a pornographic setting, who is victimized? How do you prosecute that? What is the crime? 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. You can use the open mic in the WDBO app. I, 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 I Believe me, I am not in the, I, I'm not sitting here advocating for child pornography. That's, that's, that's depraved and it's disgusting. Not to mention sinful. I should have started with sinful. But I just can't wrap my brain around the the slippery slope that this puts us on. I can't wrap my brain around how this is, how someone has been victimized. I, uh, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm in a flashback here. Uh, it had to have been the early 1990s when the internet was still relatively new. And I had a guy come over to the house from the local cable company. This is when I was living in Las Vegas. I had a guy come over to the house, local cable company, and he was hooking up my guy. I don't remember where we were in the in the internet era at the time, uh, but but I oh, I always say this: you remember the extraordinary, you forget the mundane. And what happened when this cable TV guy came to my house was extraordinary, um, and that's why it it, it 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 I remember this so well. This cable TV guy comes over to the house and and hooks me up to the internet. And then he starts explaining to me how you need to make sure that you have password protection so that people can't get onto your computer. And he said, here, let me show you. And he said, let me show you other people's computers who don't have their computers protected. And damn, if the first thing he didn't pull up on someone else's PC was child pornography. It was photographic images of what had to have been 10-year-old children having sex. And, and he was very quick to click out of it. And I was horrified by what I saw. And it's an image I can't get out of my head. I wish I could. I wish I never saw it. But boy, it taught me a lesson on, on making sure that you... You uh, have proper security protocols on on your your web, right? But if it's not real children, what exactly is the crime? 
844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. You can use the open mic and the WDBO app. We are watching a lot of really nasty weather right now uh, around St. Cloud, uh, up towards Lake Hart, around Kissimmee, uh, Harmony, some really heavy shower activity in that area. And a little further north up towards Wakiva Springs, we're seeing some pretty heavy rain and showers there as well. Nothing severe. Uh, We are keeping our storm center staffed up and ready for activation in the event uh, any of these storms turn severe on your drive home. We'll keep you updated. Coming up next here on the Joe Kelly Show, all the stories that you missed today while you were at work, while you were down in the mine, while you're out there on the factory floor. We're going to have all the headlines you missed today on WDBO. It's coming up next. Amplify your career through training and development solutions specifically designed for federal government professionals. From courses to help you attain or retain certification, to individualized coaching services, to programs that hone your leadership skills and business acumen, Management Concepts optimizes your professional development. Online, in person, individually, or groups, it's training that's measurably better. Learn more at managementconcepts.com. That's managementconcepts.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Sean Kelly, the voice of the Gators for my friends at IDC, International Diamond Center, the official jeweler of the Gators. IDC is the place I recommend to all my friends and everyone in Gator Nation for diamonds, engagement rings, and all of their fine jewelry needs. International Diamond Center is a Florida family-owned jeweler with worldwide connections to guarantee you the best value period. I only partner with the best of the best, someone I can trust that will never disappoint someone that I send their way. Experience for yourself a mind-blowing selection, uncompromising quality with exceptional value, and ironclad warranties. And most important to me is their reputation for doing business with honesty and transparency. International Diamond Center, the place where the Gators get up and go for diamonds, engagement rings, fashion jewelry, and Swiss timepieces. Store locations, hours, and more at shopidc.com. WDBO. With the resources of Severe Weather Center 9 and the National Weather Service. Storm Center coverage has been activated. Orlando severe weather coverage starts now. Well, sometimes I hate being right. Uh, I'm Joe Kelly in the WDBO Storm Center, and just moments after I said that I would not be surprised if we had a severe thunderstorm warning, we do, in fact, have a severe thunderstorm warning just issued by the National Weather Service. Uh, and that severe thunderstorm warning includes uh, South Central Orange County and North Central Osceola County. Until 5.45 p.m., just a couple of minutes ago, a severe thunderstorm is located over East Lake Toho, and it is nearly stationary. That's the worst kind of storms, as it just sits over an area and continues to pummel a single area. 60-mile-an-hour wind gusts and penny-sized hail are indicated by radar in this storm. You can expect damage to rooftops, sidings, and trees. If you have a garbage can of today's garbage pickup day in your neighborhood and you haven't picked up the empty garbage can yet, good luck finding your garbage can. Locations impacted include Orlando, Kissimmee, Buenaventura Lakes, East Lake Toho, and Narcusi. Once again, if you're just joining us, the National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for South Central Orange County and North Central Osceola County until 5.45 p.m. We will continue to keep you updated on the latest of the weather conditions right here on the Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. All right, if you're just joining us, though, here are the headlines. Here are the stories that you missed today. While you're at work, nine hours ago, ABC News reported that U.S. Food and Drug Administrators declined to improve a needle-free nasal spray alternative to an EpiPen. Pending further study, ABC News reported nine hours ago that President Biden is going to launch the American Climate Corps, which, according to the White House, will provide training for some 20,000 young people to have what they call successful careers in the climate resilient economy. New York Times eight hours ago reported that a proposed 34,000 seat cricket stadium in the Bronx, has been rejected. The venue will be built on Long Island. Who knew cricket was a thing in New York or anywhere else? Uh, Six hours ago, ABC News reported that Andrew Lester, 
who is the Kansas City man charged in the shooting death of a teenager who mistakenly went to the wrong house back in April. This this, uh, young black teenager went to this house back in April to pick up his brother. He had the wrong address. Uh, But the homeowner who shot him through the door has pleaded not guilty. The trial expected to begin in October. Four hours ago, the Prime Minister of Britain, Rishi Sunak, says he is delaying by five years a ban on new gas and diesel cars that had been due to take effect in 2030. The move waters down climate goals made by the U.K. Four hours ago, New York Times reported that Vladimir Zelensky criticized the U.N. in his first in-person speech to the Security Council, saying it was doing too little to stop the war in Ukraine. Three hours ago, the uh, ABC News reported that a suspected gunman in the fatal shooting of a Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputy pleads not guilty by reason of insanity to murder with special circumstances. Three hours ago, Bloomberg had the report that the Fed left its benchmark interest rate unchanged while signaling borrowing costs will likely stay higher for longer after one more hike this year. Two hours ago, uh, CNN reported that Republican Kerry Lake, who, as you recall, lost the 2022 race for the Arizona governor, is expected to announce a Senate bid as early as next month. Just an hour ago uh, and, and about three minutes ago, as Laura Lee reported, uh, but the New York Times had the story that Americans will once again be able to get free COVID tests by mail uh, ahead of a possible winter surge. And lastly, 48 minutes ago, CNN reported that a judge has denied Hunter Biden's request to appear virtually for his first court hearing in the federal gun case and sets an arraignment for Tuesday of next week. Those are the stories that you missed today while you were at the office. I'm Joe Kelly. You can join me at 844-580-WDBO. David is joining us here on the Joe Kelly Show as we're talking about AI-generated child sex imagery and the attorney gen- uh, attorneys general from all 50 states are calling on Congress to do something about this. Hey, David, how are you? Hi, how are you, Joe? Very good, thanks. Great, thank you for taking my call. Uh, earlier, you posed the question, what is the crime, right? And you're right. trying to wrap your head around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe, and that, that's, what, that's what possessed me to call you right away. Um, I believe that the crime is, is sort of like a public safety kind of thing, uh, where if you're kind of feeding into an idea and allowing it to spread, you know, without a law, um, it kind of permeates the society. And, you know, our, the laws in this great country are supposed to be to protect us, uh, you know. Right, but... but so and that's I, how you could understand. Uh, but, and, and I want to agree with you. I'm just, again, struggling to understand this because, yeah. you know, as part of our First Amendment, I mean, we have freedom of speech. And if, and if you, again, I'll use the example, if you were a great artist and you were to come up with a drawing of, of children uh-huh. engaged in a sex act... I mean, is that illegal? Would that would that be against the law under uh, a law that would prevent AI generated child sex imagery? That's a great question. And I do actually agree with you uh, in regards to that First Amendment example. But remember, the other half of that example says that you can't yell fire in a theater because it's a public safety issue. Sure. You see, you see what I mean? So, 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 so or allowing something like that to spread would actually be, you know, against our interest in the public safety. Now, I got to, I got to claim a little bit of ignorance here. I don't know to what extent uh, someone who possesses child pornography, like real child pornography, uh, I don't know to what extent they would then act upon that and go out and hurt somebody in the community, uh, or, or if they just look at imagery i I don't know uh but but from that angle i from that angle i think you're right you know if if ai generated child pornography imagery uh would then motivate someone to go out into the community and to, to steal a child from a playground somewhere and to do terrible things to that child then i think that could fall under the yelling fire in a in a crowded movie theater type scenario yes sir I, I love your show, Joe, and this question you brought up, this was a hot one, and, and I love that you're doing it. You're doing the, the Lord's work, buddy. Thank, Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thanks, David, so much, man. I really appreciate your phone call, 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. And, and our producer, Greg, and I we were bouncing around ideas earlier today 
on this same topic, and he said, what about, like, video games like Grand Theft Auto? You know, in Grand Theft Auto, you, you can shoot and kill people. And, and I'm sorry, I don't, I don't play GTA, but can't you, like, rape people? You can, I mean, you can, you can sexually assault people in Grand Theft Auto in video games. I mean, that's troublesome. But again, who is the victim? Who, who's had their rights violated in that scenario? 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. Or hit me up, HMU, in the open mic in the WDBO app. This is WDBO, 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. In-depth segments on topics that matter to Orange, Seminole, Osceola, and all of Central Florida. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. I love your show every night. You're doing great, bud. All right, let the record show that healthily is a word. Healthily is the right word, so good job there. Uh, Severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for another six minutes. I would not be surprised if that is extended, uh, as it is a pretty strong storm system that's happening right now. Uh, on the south end of Orange County, the north end of Osceola County. We'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, uh, Anheuser-Busch making an announcement today. Has nothing to do with Bud Light, by the way. It has everything to do with their Clydesdale horses. Uh, imagine having to appease so many different public interest groups. So PETA has been giving grief to Budweiser. Little did I know uh, that PETA has been giving grief to um, Budweiser because of the Clydesdales. Because Budweiser docks the tails of Clydesdales. Laurel, this is something that's near and dear to your heart as an animal lover. Uh, uh, Can you explain what docking a tail means? I believe, and I'm not a horse expert, but they just cut them real short, don't they? They just cut them real short so they don't get tangled up in their bridles and when they're pulling the carriages and such. Pretty much, yeah. Same same as when we have their dog breeds, like boxers, uh, that, that have their tails docked. Uh, which just makes them short and stubby. And uh, Anheuser-Busch announces they'll no longer cut the tails of their Clydesdale horses. PETA uh, announced they're celebrating the decision, saying that they're cracking open some cold ones in celebration. I don't know exactly what cold ones they're cracking open at PETA, but they're cracking open something. So, uh, so, so that... So I, I guess I guess that's good. Uh, is that a good thing? To, are we glad that they're going to stop docking the tails on horses? I don't know. I cannot speak on behalf of horses. Um, all right. So we're talking about AI-generated child sex imagery. Uh, again, a trigger warning if, if this is something that's going to trouble you. Uh, as the 50 uh, attorneys general from all 50 states and four territories send a letter to Congress urging lawmakers – to basically outlaw AI-generated child sex imagery. And I'm certainly not advocating in favor of AI-generated child sex imagery. I just can't figure out how you're going to police that. I can't figure out how, how who the victim is. I can't, I mean, if it's AI-generated, what exactly is the crime? Hi, Joe. So what I wanted to say about the artificial intelligence pornography thing Uh, The first thing you said was it was a sin because anything that causes you to lust is indeed a sin. The second thing is this comes from the God of counterfeit, Satan. So take it for that. I'm with you, man. I'm with you 100%. But sins, uh, while some sins are against the law, like thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder... Uh, uh, not all sins uh, are crimes in the United States. I also mentioned that in the in the early '90s, I had a computer tech come over to the house. Actually, it was the cable tech, the cable guy, and he was telling me how to make sure that my systems are secure. And he said, "Let me show you what I'm talking about." And he pulled up someone else's PC, and there was an image of child sex on it. Hey, Joe, I sure hope you reported that instance of child pornography you were exposed to to either the local police or the FBI. I didn't. I, I didn't. And and in hindsight, uh, you, you've certainly given me something to think about. But the reality is that image popped up on my PC for maybe a fraction of a second uh, before the cable tech quickly closed it out. Uh, and I wouldn't even begin to know how to figure out where that image even came from, whose PC it was, 
Uh, as I mean, I was living in a, a single family home. It wasn't like I was even in an apartment complex. I was in a home. Uh, and it wasn't from a PC in my house. I only had one. That was back in the day when you could only afford one PC. These days, there's PCs in every room uh, of people's houses. Joe, you have to consider that AI is imagery that is collected from many different images that are floating around the Internet. So while it may not be one entire person, it may be parts of different people. And so it is indeed pirated material. Yeah, and that's an interesting thought, and I'm I, I'm with you on that. And that's part of what the the uh, writers' strike and the actors' strike is about out in Hollywood uh, is is pirating copywritten material. So I do I do get that part of it. So the crime is child pornography. Period. If an adult is going to paint children in a pornographic setting. They're sick, and uh, they're not going to stop with just painting. Yeah, they, they are sick, no doubt. The companies who own the AI technology, like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, they've already been cracking down. You can't even type in the word bikini or anything like that that may come up with a sexualized figure. It's a great, great point, and, and uh, ironically, or not ironically, Stable Diffusion is one of the companies that I named here as I was uh, 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 setting up this, this story here for you. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Every single piece of child pornography, whether a photograph of real children, hand-drawn, AI, whatever it is, is illegal to possess. Just like cocaine is illegal to possess, any form of child pornography is illegal to possess. You can be charged for every single piece of child pornography that you are in possession of. So if you have 1,000 pieces of child pornography, you could, probably wouldn't ever be, but you could be charged 1,000 counts against you in a court of law. Yeah. I, I, I struggle, I struggle with defining if, if someone was to draw a picture, I mean, would that be child p- pornography? Uh, I've got an open mic here that I, I, that, that says we talked about something, Laurel, and you'll have to refresh my memory because I don't remember this discussion. Of course, I don't remember any words I ever said the second they leave my mouth. I don't remember what I said. So someone's going to have to refresh my memory on this one because I don't remember this uh, this conversation. But take a listen to this open mic. Yes, I wanted to mention that someone had called in the other day and talking about gentlemen's clubs, how that might bring business down to Orlando. And you said that you had been to one and that sounded like you endorsed them. And this ties into your topic of child pornography because a lot of those girls in there are underage. I think it's a very ungodly and unbiblical thing to do. Um, and that's just my opinion. And I wanted to mention that. And I have children and I'm horrified about the thought of gentlemen's clubs, which lead to things like this. Did we have a discussion about gentlemen's clubs? Yeah. So we were talking about Orlando was asking or we we're talking about how Orlando could use a gentleman's club because big major cities, all big major cities have things and Orlando doesn't have some things the big major cities do. And I'm so sorry. Somebody, was I here? Yeah. You're the one that, that agreed that Orlando doesn't have a gentleman's club. In Orlando, and then most big cities do. They do have good buffets at gentlemen's clubs. <laughs> I'm sure you mentioned that as well. Yes. yes. Um, you know, if you drive down South OBT, there are a couple of quote unquote gentlemen's clubs. There's nothing gentlemanly about those clubs. Uh, and and if anything, I mean, I am surprised that Orlando doesn't have uh, a, a, if you will, a fancy gentlemen's club. Uh, because other cities, and you know, like I said, I've, many times I grew up in Texas, but you go to Houston and Dallas, uh, Austin. I mean, there are five star gentlemen's clubs. I mean, that are that the the meals are exquisite, the service is is second to none, uh, and of course there are naked women. I uh, have I been to a gentleman's club in my life? Of yes, I have been to a gentleman's. I've I have not always been a Christian. I I. Uh, look back upon those times with embarrassment, but I, I, I can't lie to you. I got to be honest with you. Uh, but I have not been to a gentleman's club. Man. I mean, I've not been to a gentleman's club since my first marriage. 
So it's been 25, almost 30 years. I honestly don't remember the last time I've been to a gentleman's club, but it, it, but it has not been in any kind of recent uh, history whatsoever. 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. You can use the open mic and the WDBO app. We had a very bizarre, very, very, very bizarre open mic uh, that I am having a hard time figuring out what it even is. I feel like we had a butt dial open mic of someone that got in a car crash. And I, I want you guys to help me figure out what is going on here. So stay with us. I want you to hear this open mic. I'll have it for you coming up immediately after this. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. News, weather, traffic, all the things you want on your drive home. Plus, Joe Kelly being, well, Joe Kelly. Now, The Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's News and Talk, WDBO. Hey, Joe, a little off the topic, but uh, uh, I was just curious if you were ever going to start doing your podcast again or uh, podcast of the show. I don't know if it's uh, you that needs to edit it and you're the one that does it, and that's, you know, I'm sure you're very busy. That's why it hasn't been uh, happening. But love them, you know, when I couldn't catch you live. It's great to catch up on. I, I'm so glad you asked that. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to to expand upon that because I I do mention pretty pretty much every night a couple of times that we do have a podcast and what I suspect you're listening to is the former podcast uh, which was called Behind the News with Joe Kelly and we are no longer updating that podcast. Uh, but if you look for the Joe Kelly Show podcast, uh, that is updated every single uh, weekday. Uh, with both uh, original content and a rebroadcast of this show. So if you ever miss this show and you want to catch up, if you there was a topic you wanted to hear, uh, maybe you had called in or you left an open mic and you wanted to hear yourself on the radio, uh, you, can, you can download the podcast, get it wherever you get your podcast. It includes Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and elsewhere. Uh, but yes, thank you for asking. We do have a podcast and it is available for you pretty much uh, every single day. Uh, Laurel, you and I were talking about this a little while ago off the air, but we got this really weird open mic, and I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain how we even got this. We got a 14-minute open mic, and our open mics are limited to 30 seconds. Uh, it right, sh- by the app, not by us. But right. The app won't let you go longer than 30 seconds. It stops after 30 seconds, and every now and again, we'll get like, a two-minute open mic, and we all scratch our heads thinking, how did that happen? How did that get through? I've never seen a 14-minute open mic come in before, but it sounds almost like a butt dial because at no point is the person actually talking to us, and as near as I can tell, take a listen, it sounds like maybe he got in a car crash. Uh, All right. So he's struggling. You can hear him struggling. I hear traffic in the background. Right? You can hear the traffic there. He mildly cusses a couple times. Uh. Uh. I hear metal on metal clanging. He's breathing heavily. Is that not weird? Unless he's like trying to change a tire. Huh? Yeah. If if you're that guy, if that was you, please leave us an open mic and let us know that you're okay. That that was just so unusual. We don't that that I listened to the whole thing. Uh the the first 10 minutes were inaudible. The last 4 minutes was what you just heard. It was him panting heavily, cussing a few times. I could hear traffic in the background, but I have no idea 
Uh, very bizarre. If that's you, I, I hope and I pray that you're okay. Uh, it sounds like maybe you've been in a car crash or something along those lines. Uh, the weather is terrible right now, so certainly that could be a possibility. Uh, for everybody, please drive safely. We'll continue. The Joe Kelly Show, coming up next. Stay with us. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Now, WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. Triple Team Traffic. Still seeing lots of red on the screen here, so no matter where you are, you're probably in the middle of a slowdown somewhere on I-4, uh, 417 as well. Anything south of 528, you're going to find some heavy, slow areas, and that's because of the rainfall that's happening uh, in lots of different parts of Osceola, Seminole, Orange County, even pushing up into Lake County right now. Let's see. This report is sponsored by ProTech. Air conditioning and plumbing service for honesty, integrity, and 100% customer satisfaction. Call ProTech, 407-291-1644, or visit ProTechAC.com. From the WDBO Triple Team Traffic Center, I'm Paul Cross. This is WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Connected to our community. Talk local issues and events with Joe Kelly. Use the open mic in the WDBO app and let Joe know what interests you. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Well, kind of guess where my umbrella is. It's in my car. Hey, Laurel, would you go out to my car and get my umbrella? Yeah, hot <laughs> don't you have the Don't you have the kind of car that will tell you if you have a flat tire or if you left your umbrella in the car? It tells me if I have a flat tire. In fact, it tells me that way too often. Uh, but it does not tell me. I've got two umbrellas in my car, and at this point, uh, there's, I, I'm going to get soaked. So, and, and then the last uh, time I had to go out in the rain, it was with a garbage bag over my head, and evidently <laughs> ended up looking like a Klansman because it was uh, it was pointy at the top, and it was weird, and it was horrible, and I hated it. Um, so we got this really weird open mic earlier, and somebody has a theory about it. Let me play for you this weird open mic. And I don't understand how this happened. I, there's some sort of flaw or glitch, uh, a gremlin in the system somehow. Uh, the ghost is in the machinery. But we got this 14-minute long open mic, and I was able to edit it down to about four minutes. And at no point is someone talking to us, but it sounds like a man is struggling uh, inside a car. Take a listen. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Ah. So I hear cars going by, so he's certainly in traffic somewhere. So if you're that guy, if, if that happens to be you, hit us up again in the open mic if you don't mind and let us know that you're okay because uh, I am a little bit worried about you. I feel like perhaps you got into a car crash. Though this open mic here, uh, someone has a different theory as to perhaps what that guy's problem is. And honestly, I think this guy might be onto something here. So I have a theory on what that sound might have been. I believe it may have been that man attempting to send an open mic However, he dropped his phone into the great void between the seat and the center console. Oh, right? Is that, that makes a little bit of sense, doesn't it? Yeah, that totally could be what that is. Yep. Right. It's right there where the French fry is. Yeah. Uh, uh, you got all those French fries. And that, that quarter up. you dropped three months ago. Right? Yes. And like, like for me, it'd be like a vitamin. There's a pill down there somewhere. It's like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I, I dropped that. It's like that video of that lady who thought she was taking her vitamins and ended up swallowing her uh, her earbud. <laughs> and we all know how that ended up, if you will, ended uh, up or down. Anyhow. Um, all right. So let's move on. Hi, I'm Joe Kelly. You're listening to The Joe Kelly Show. Uh, I, interesting story today that the Pentagon, the Biden administration, is going to look to restore the honor of thousands of LGBTQ plus service members who were kicked out of the military before the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So the Defense Department announced a new initiative today on the 12th anniversary of the repeal of the policy that banned gays and lesbians from openly serving in the military. 
I don't know if you guys, uh, some of our older listeners might know this. Some of our younger younger listeners will not. Uh, it was then President Bill Clinton, liberal President Bill Clinton, who came up. He 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 didn't want to outright make it legal for gays to be in the military uh, because he knew that would be an unpopular political position. So he he was the one, or someone on his staff. Uh, devised this plan of don't ask, don't tell. Don't, don't, you're not, no one's allowed to ask you if you're gay and you better not tell anybody you're gay. And as long as nobody asks and you don't tell anybody, you'll be able to stay in the military just fine. But if, but if, but if you tell someone or they otherwise find out you're gay, you'll be kicked out of the military. I, 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 at, at the risk of taking on an unpopular opinion, I think there is validity to this. Uh, There have been gay men and women who who have served this nation probably since 1776. I mean, since the day we were founded, we have had gay men initially, and now there's women in the military, gay men and women who have served this country and have served this country well. I don't know if you know this, if you're not in the military, but a dishonorable discharge or what they call, this is a a different type of discharge, what they call a less than honorable discharge hurts. It can be very painful, not physical pain, uh, but it can cause great strife in one's career and in one's life trying to recover from a dishonorable discharge from the military. I say this because I know a couple of people who have been dishonorably discharged from the military or less than honorably discharged from the military. Now, I I know and I believe that the U.S. military has gone way, way, way too far uh, into the territory of LGBTQ+. Um, I'm, I'm simply talking about gay men and women. When we get into into the trans stuff, we're into different territory there. But for for men and women who are kicked out of the military and were given dishonorable discharges for no other reason than being gay, I don't have a problem with the Pentagon going back and reviewing this and deciding to change their discharge orders from dishonorable or less than honorable to an honorable discharge or even to just a general discharge. A general discharge is a thing and a general discharge is still better than a dishonorable discharge or a less than honorable discharge. So what do you think? 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. You can use the uh, open mic in the WDBO app, uh, and we've we've got some. Uh, hang on, bear with me for one second. I got to find the open mic I was looking for. I thought, oh, here we go. Um, okay, so take, and, and I think this open mic here is absolutely correct. Well, as a Navy veteran, I got to say, isn't that special that the Biden administration wants to help all the LBGTQ plus people get reinstated back in the military. Meanwhile, the people that refuse the COVID shot are left twisting in the wind. They're not lifting a damn finger to reinstate those qualified people. Yeah, you're right. And my blood boils over people that were dishonorably discharged or less than honorably discharged from the military because they would not take the COVID vaccine particularly what we know about the COVID vaccine now, that it's ineffective, uh, that it doesn't stop you from getting COVID, that it doesn't stop you from spreading COVID, and that people like Anthony Fauci lined their pockets with millions and millions of dollars selling the COVID vaccines. That, that was a hoax and a scam. The disease wasn't. The disease is real. The vaccines are a hoax and a scam. And I agree with you that if we're, gonna, if we're going to restore the honor, if you will, 
for gay and lesbian service members, I believe we should similarly restore the honor for the men and women who have been discharged from the military because they refused a an experimental vaccine. What do you think? 844-580-WDBO. 844-580-9326. You can use the open mic in the WDBO app. I, I do believe that there have been plenty of men and women who are gay or lesbian who served their country valiantly, whether in peacetime or wartime, whether on a battlefield or in an office space, whether in a, in a doctor's clinic stateside uh, or a foxhole uh, in Afghanistan. I, there have been gay men and women who have served this nation and have served this nation well. And they should not be dishonorably discharged just because they're gay, especially now that we have repealed the law, the rule. I don't even know that don't tell, don't ask, don't tell was a law as much as it was a military rule. But since that rule has been repealed, I I think we should restore the honor to the gay men and women who were kicked out of the military simply for being gay. Now, if they did something else that that triggered them getting kicked out, then that's on them. But if they simply got kicked out for being who they are, for being gay, I, I don't have a problem at all in restoring their honor by changing their discharge status. As long as they served honorably, they should be given an honorable discharge. What do you think? 844-580-WDBO. Or hit me up in the open mic in the WDBO app. We've got a very active pattern in the WDBO interactive radar right now. But remarkably, we do not have any severe thunderstorm warnings uh, except for uh, out in Brevard County. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning in Brevard County. And that's in effect until... Hang on, that's in effect until, I don't see the time on it, but that's in Brevard County and is moving out to the sea, out to the Atlantic, so it's going to be out of your way in just a little bit. Otherwise, drive safely. We'll get a complete traffic update right after uh, right after this, so stay with us. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Now, now the three big things you need to know. Three. Three. An independent review board is giving Elon Musk's new biotechnology company approval to offer brain implants to par- paralyzed patients in a clinical trial. Neuralink says its goal is to grant people the ability to control a computer cursor or keyboard using their thoughts alone. Patients in the trial will get a chip surgically implanted in the part of their brain that controls movement. Two. Two. The president of the United Auto Workers says more workers will join the strike Friday if automakers don't offer a fair deal. Nearly 13,000 new UAW workers are in day six of their strike against the big three U.S. automakers. Among the workers' demands are better pay and pension benefits. One. One. The Fed Reserve is once again pausing interest rate hikes. From March 2022 through May of 2023, the Fed raised rates at 10 successive meetings. The Fed has been raising rates to combat inflation. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Insightful. You tell the truth from your point of view. Entertaining. Man, that guy is a lot taller than me sounds on the radio. And engaging. When we hear you on the radio, it's a good thing. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. You can use the open mic in the WDBO app. Man, honestly, at this point, it'd be easier for me to tell you where it's not raining than where it is. I mean, it is It is absolutely pouring right now. Good Lord, Joe. It's raining cats and dogs in Windermere. Yeah, I don't doubt it. It is quite a mess right now. Uh, let's go to Richie, uh, who is joining us now at 844-580-WDBO. Hey, Richie, you're on the Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Hey, Joe, you got a great show. Love listening to it while driving, and you're exactly right. That was a huge hoax from start to finish. And I was thinking in 2018 when everything was good, what are those communists going to do to take this country down, to take down Trump? And my prediction then was they would, they've made up all kinds of other stories, you know, climate change, acid rain, 
uh, holes in the ozone and stuff that's going to kill us. And I never thought it would be a, a, a COVID thing. I thought at the time it was going to be they were going to say that there was a meteorite heading for Earth and yeah. only the government could save us. Sure. So my question for you is, now we got an election coming up. They can't play the COVID card again. What are they going to come up with? I'll hang up and listen. Thanks a lot. Great show. Uh, thanks. I appreciate that, Richie. Well, first of all, they can play the COVID card again. And as you heard Laura Lee reporting in the news just a short time ago, that the government is now going to make available uh, free COVID tests again. You can go online and get your free COVID tests. And as we head into the fall, uh, some of our government experts, and and if you're watching the uh, the chat room video, I'm using the finger quotes on government experts uh, are predicting that we're going to have another COVID season ahead, uh, just like we would a flu season. Uh, and, and just to be clear, I don't believe that COVID was a hoax. Uh, I But I do believe that the vaccine and the vaccine distribution uh, was was uh, highly sus uh, and was a hoax and, and giving experimental vaccines uh, that really are ineffective they're ineffective at stopping you from getting the COVID, the, the, uh, COVID and they're ineffective in stopping you from spreading COVID. Uh, I just, that's a hoax. And, and I think it's a shame. And especially uh, if we kicked out members, not if, we did kick out members of the military who refused to get the COVID vaccine. Now, for the gays and lesbians who were kicked out you know, prior to the end of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which was 12 years ago, uh, they they it took them more than 12 years to get justice. So maybe in another decade or so, those who got kicked out of the services for not taking the COVID shot will finally get their justice. I would hate to see it take that long. I, I do agree with the Biden administration as much as, as it hurts me to say those words in that order to agree with the Biden administration but I believe that seeking to restore the honor of thousands of gay and lesbian service members who were kicked out of the military before the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell uh, is, is sound policy. I believe we should reconsider, uh, and, and which isn't a blanket rubber stamp that everybody's going uh, to get either be reinstated or have their status changed from dishonorable to honorable. Uh, I think they're going to be extenuating circumstances for some of these members, and they should. Uh, some of those service members should still be dishonorably discharged. But for people who are kicked out purely because they're gay or lesbian, uh, I do believe that they should have their... Because a dishonorable discharge stays with you for life. Every job application you ever fill out, it will follow you everywhere you go. It makes your life more difficult. It's difficult to come out from under a dishonorable discharge. You know that uh, people actually get dishonorable discharge back when I was in the military for uh, having too much debt. Blockbuster uh, accounts caused people to get Article 15s because they had too much uh, late fees. So there's been a lot of times that the military has given people dishonorable discharge uh, or even general discharge for breaking the rules of the military. If those were the rules at the time and you broke them, you get a dishonorable discharge. Of course, it seems so absurd now to think that somebody had late fees at Blockbuster to get kicked out of the military. Uh, I mean, that should not be one of the criteria uh, f- for whether or not w- s- someone can be a trained killer in our military. Um, I mean, just because it was a, a bad rule, uh, to me, you know, if, if don't ask, don't tell was a bad rule, uh, then, then we and and so bad that we got rid of it. Then we ought to make whole the people who were affected by it. Hey, this is William from Orlando. I agree with the difference between which is wrong between enlisted people not taking a vaccine and want to reinstate people because of LGBTQ whatever. I was in the military during the time when you couldn't say "Don't ask, don't tell." It never made my decision to serve my country or the way. But apparently now, if you check the right boxes, you're given a reward. Yeah, these days, honestly, if, you, if you're transgender, you you might get, uh, move up the ranks even faster these days. And and obviously, the pendulum has swung too far in the opposite direction. And, and such is life. The, the pendulum always swings too far one way or the other. And right now, especially in the U.S. military, the pendulum has swung way too far uh, in favor of LGBTQ rights and and not 
swinging far enough onto the side of just being the world's most feared military. That's what I want is the world's most feared military, not the the world's most woke military. 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. Coming up after this, Donald Trump has identified one cabinet department that he is going to shut down if he's elected president. I'll tell you what that cabinet department is and get your take on it. That'll be coming up next on The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. This is WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Breaking news to lively debates, covering the issues that matter to you. I make it a point to listen to Joe Kelly when I need to fully understand what's happening in the news. Now, the Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's news and talk, WDBO. I, I've grown weary. I, long ago, I grow, I've grown weary of hearing Donald Trump complaining about the election of 2024. I, I'm, I'm tired of that. Uh, If that's what he wants to make this election about, then I am not interested in Donald Trump. But if Donald Trump has, if he's got some policy ideas, some new policy ideas or some old policy ideas that he wants to re-implement, that's what I want to hear. And and he has done exactly that. Donald Trump says he will shut down the Department of Education and return the role to the states if he is uh, elected president once again. I 110 percent stand behind that. I don't know if you guys know this, but the Department of Education did not exist. The U.S. federal Department of Education did not exist until the Jimmy Carter administration. It was Jimmy Carter who created the Department of Education. And and forgive me, I don't have the exact figure, but every school in America gets a percentage of federal dollars from the U.S. Department of Education. But the number is infinitesimal. I mean, it's something like three percent of their budget comes from the federal government. It's it's a drop in the bucket. It's a pittance. And it is not worth the control that the federal government has over our schools. And I absolutely would support returning the control of schools back over to the states. There are 50 perfect state incubators that can do the best that they can. State lawmakers and local school districts and local administrators uh, can craft their own laws on how to properly educate our kids. And then we, as American citizens, can decide... Out of those 50 state incubators, where do we want our kids to go to school and figure out what state we want to live in, uh, which more and per- more and more people are doing that anyway. They're picking where they want to live first, then they get the job second. Used to be uh, with our parents' generations, it was the other way around. You go to where the job is and it just happens to be whatever state it is. Uh, th- things have really turned around when it comes to that kind of stuff. So uh, uh, kudos to Donald Trump uh, for saying that you'll shut down the Department of Education for what it's worth. Ron DeSantis has said the exact same thing, that he would shut down the Department of Education. So uh, on that matter, they're even. 844-580-WDBO. Mike is joining us from Deltona. We're talking about uh, the Biden administration saying that they're going to now reevaluate everybody who was discharged from the military uh, back during Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Uh, If they got dishonorable or less than honorable discharges, they may now be eligible for an honorable discharge instead. Mike, what are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, Joe, infinitesimal. I've never heard that damn word before. Now I got to look it up to make sure I use the right word. (laughs) But anyways, uh, to the other thing, I'm just thinking that, uh, you know, once again, as far left as our society is going, if we're not going to open up another Pandora's box, now I can agree with within a certain time frame, having uh, people's uh, discharges changed to a general or honorable discharge for one thing, but the laws of the day were adhered to by those laws during that day. We have the left now that's destroying uh, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and all these other people because they owned slaves in a time oh, when it was a legal thing. Yeah, terrible. Right. So I think that there's got to be a time frame. 
Other than that, then we might as well just wipe all of our laws off the books and go back to flat earth and start all over again. Well, do do you not think that there's a difference, though, between uh, those historic figures that are no longer alive versus people who uh, American citizens who are still alive and and we can make right by them? Well, yes, that's why I say that there should be like a time frame if there were something that, you know, let's go back this so many years. And yes, those people, they can have their uh, discharges changed from a dishonorable to something uh, more appropriate. But at the same time, when we have laws changing day by day as far as the legalization of marijuana and, and stuff like that, you know, everybody that has been incarcerated in the past that are still living, that have been incarcerated and paid premium amounts of money for legal fees and even incarceration, okay, are we going to pay them back because they're still alive? Well, as as, as as you may this. as you may be aware, Mike, there are states now that are that are trying to, uh, you know, go back. To, think of states like Colorado, where marijuana is pretty much legal in every imaginable form. Uh, but there are right. still people that are sitting in jail on marijuana charges, uh, and and you know, there's an effort afoot to to get those people discharged from jail, uh, or to have their criminal records expunged. Uh, because marijuana is now pretty much legal and widely accepted in most U.S. states. So I, right. I, I see where you're coming from. There is a can of worms here that is being opened uh, when, it, when it comes to you know, going back and trying to rectify uh, what are, by today's standards, considered to be wrongs. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my point exactly. You know, where, where does it all end? Because, you know, now we can, I mean, in certain states, they're pushing to kill babies while they're crowning, but that's murder. Uh, yeah. You know, so, I mean, where does it all end? Where do we go off the edge? And where do we say there's got to be limitations in all facets of this reparations and all this yeah. stuff? Yeah, you make that makes sense. I get where you're coming from. And, and Mike, most importantly, I just want to tell you that I looked it up. Infinitesimal <laughs> means extremely small, a very small quantity, a value approaching zero. So uh, I'm, I'm just well, thrilled that, that, I... that, that that is a word. <laughs> Sometimes I'll say a word and I'm like, was that the right word? Did I mean to say that word? So I appreciate you calling me out on that. Uh, but yeah, that is. Hey, I appreciate the lesson. There you I'll go, have brother. To use that one for speech. We learn something new every day, right? Right. Thanks, man. Drive safely. I I appreciate you calling. Eight four four five eight zero WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Orange, Seminole, Osceola, and all of Central Florida. Join the conversation now by using the open mic in the WDBO app. Now, the Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's News and Talk, WDBO. You know, it's really interesting. We, we, we've been talking about this guy that got punched. Uh, it was during the uh, Patriots game on s- Sunday. Uh, and he, the, a couple of fans got into a fight. It was, it was the Dolphins and the Patriots, wasn't it? And they got into a fight in the stands. And the, the guy that got punched in the, in the face... Uh, fell over backwards, hit his head on the concrete, and died. The the automatic and quick assumption was that that the guy died from a traumatic brain injury from hitting his head on the concrete down below. Well, now the coroner, medical examiner, is saying that's not how he died. Which, for the guy that punched him, I don't know if he was facing any criminal charges or not. Uh, in what I've read, I've not seen that he's that he that he was facing any criminal charges, at least not yet. They, they certainly would have likely thrown. This guy was a 30-year season ticket holder for the Patriots. Uh, so a longtime fan of the Patriots. But now they're saying that it was something else that caused his death. I, I, and, but they haven't revealed what it is yet. So the cause and manner of death remain undetermined pending further testing. Uh, the DA's office didn't provide any details on his medical issue. 
So I, I guess to an extent that's good that one fan didn't murder another fan in the stands during an NFL game. I mean, that's good news. I mean, it's sad that the guy died and grown freaking adults should know better than to fist fight in the stands of any game, anywhere, anytime. Can we just be grown-ups, please? Can we go to an outdoor event with other people? We were just talking about this in the chat thread, in the chat box about how, you know, when you're in big groups, there's a point at which I just want to get out. And if and if I saw a fight break out, that would be it. I'd be like, all right, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. I just, I don't want to be here any longer. Uh, and, man, I've been to hockey games in the past where, you know, Clearly, it's, uh, you know, cuss in front of your children night at the hockey game tonight, uh, that kind of stuff. But I I just don't get fans who get so riled up. It it should not matter what the issue is. uh, But coming into a fist fight in the stands is unacceptable to me. Uh, But for the for the dude who hit him and for the family of the deceased, I'm 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 glad to hear that it wasn't the punch that killed him. It wasn't the fall that killed him, that it was something else. But now I'm curious. Now I have to know my curious nature. I need to know how he died. I need to know what it was. Yeah, but if he was punched or scared and he had a heart attack, wouldn't that still be considered at least manslaughter? It's possible. Now I will say I watched this video and not to strike any blame, but the Patriots fan that unfortunately died from the event is not without blame in this. He inserted himself into a situation and got punched. Yeah. So just to be fair to all parties, from yeah. what I saw anyways. Well, I'm glad. I appreciate that. Uh, and I'm glad you saw that. And I, I, I pray for his family. I know it's got to be tough losing someone, no matter the circumstances. Uh, we've all lost someone in our lives, and that's that's never fun and never a good thing. Uh, but I am glad to the extent that it doesn't appear as if he was murdered uh, in the uh, in the game, in the stands there. My name is Joe Kelly. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Check out the Joe Kelly Show podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Find the Joe Kelly Facebook page wherever you get your Facebook and uh, give that a follow. We always have unique content there as well. My name is Joe Kelly, and we will be back with you here tomorrow afternoon at 5 on WDBO. Amplify your career through training and development solutions specifically designed for federal government professionals. From courses to help you attain or retain certification, to individualized coaching services, to programs that hone your leadership skills and business acumen, Management Concepts optimizes your professional development. Online, in person, individually, or groups, it's training that's measurably better. Learn more at managementconcepts.com. That's managementconcepts.com.